All right, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So today, Friday, July 28th, 2023, I, Pat McKinley, am interviewing Bill Christian at the Rocky Mountain Regional VA Medical Center in Aurora, Colorado, as part of Remembering Our Veterans program. Welcome to the interview, Bill. I'm looking forward to uh, us discussing your experience in life and in the military. So could you tell us a little bit about where you were born and your early life, uh, your little childhood? Okay, well, I was born in Hell's Kitchen, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents moved out of there soon after, and I grew up in Wantaw, Long Island. I uh, left there uh, after I finished college, and uh, with that, I had gone to high school up in Buffalo, mm. <clears throat> got hurt in football, was looking at a possible blank, uh, blood clot on the brain, Ooh. and the tests they had then were very painful, and there was a lot of afterwards. I always wanted to go back to playing football, and then the high school I transferred to, somebody died in the field with the same kind of thing in a practice field. So I said, no, no more football. <laughs> but I am involved in a lot of other sports. Then I went on to Manhattan College, which was known then as one of the top engineering schools in the country, even above MIT, but we didn't have a master's program. Oh. <laughs> so I was in my second year, had a 2S, and uh, with that, all of a sudden, I was gonna take an extra year in college. Engineering is not the easiest career in the world. No. So with that, I got a 1A, and they wanted me to go see about the Army. I go down, and they weigh me, and they say, no problem. Your weight's no problem. So I said, no, I want a bed to sleep in. <laughs> so I went down to the Air Force, and they told me I was overweight. <laughs> so, But the Air Force had a great program at the time called uh, the Medical Remedial Enlistment Program, which they turned around and worked you to get down in your weight. So I had gone in and I went to Amarillo just before it closed. And not like Lackland, we had actual three piece people rooms. Oh, nice. And with that, uh, we went through a three month program to get our weight down. And then we went back into the basic training program. However, I was always trying to push the system. So we had a Saturday off. Nobody told us what we couldn't do. So I found a golf course on base and went and played 18 holes of golf. And one of the other things I pulled in basic, they have the smokehouse. I didn't like that the first time, but they kept on pushing the savings bonds. Mm. So I asked the TI, I says, how about I go sign up for a savings bond? So I didn't have to go through that smoke thing again. <laughs> Always pulling stuff like that. Oh, good. good. And then I got out of uh, basic training training and they sent me to Lowry Air Force Base when uh, and I was put in the F-111 radar technicians program and with that they it was new they had black box uh, pulling instead of just regular electronics and I said this isn't right they should teach electronics as well well they waited until I was at Nellis Air Force Base and then they taught everybody electronics. So <laughs> I'm always looking to the future. Uh, so at Nellis, uh, we worked on the F-111s. And whenever there was a problem nobody else could work on, I was always the one that had to go do it. We had one that the signal was popping on the screen only during a 4G pull-up. So how do you simulate that on the ground? Well, we took every panel off where our wires went. And I got in there and I started jerking all these, and all of a sudden it popped. It was a loose pin. Mm. So, but we also had other stuff with the pilots. They wouldn't use the right switching and stuff like that. And we wanted to write down in a maintenance report, um, you know, short between the headsets, but they wouldn't allow us to do that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have been a good answer though. So with that, um, I was in about two years or so, and I made buck sergeant in record time. I was on my way to get a uh, staff sergeant in under my four years. However, 
they trained us, they sent us over for munitions storage over in uh, actually the Lowry, and then I got sent to Korea. But before that, they had sent us to Holloman Air Force Base to work on F-4 radars with no training. Mm. They said, read the textbook. Oh, my. So there was two of us. We worked the midnight shift, got breakfast at midnight and breakfast in the morning. So we were cutting back on our meal expenses. Yeah. But then when I got back, I had been engaged to my wife, who I met. And with that, she knew before I knew I was going overseas. It said Southeast Asia. Mm. So with that, we moved up the wedding and we both moved to uh, Lowry again. And I was here. And then when I got my orders, it was actually for Kunsan, Korea. Three of the class went to uh, Da Nang, one went to Osan, Korea, and I went to Kunsan. Well, we had a lot of things to do. I had two staff sergeants and two buck sergeants that outranked me, but I ran the crew. So, and the master sergeant didn't have any problem with it. One of the things I have to say with the military is we had one of our airmen was driving a deuce and a half. Now we're dealing with munitions and we had to go down the main part of base and get munitions off the rail cars. Well, the guy ran in the truck into the rail car. Didn't damage the uh, rail car, but we had such a great master sergeant that he gave it to one of the Korean workers to fix up and never reported it. That's called having a group together and responsible to one another. You don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. And also one of our jobs over in Korea was we had all these weapons, especially good weapons. And with that, uh, we got alerts at least once a month that North was coming down to us. Mm. So we had a practice blowing up the dump. And with that, I was in the special weapons area. And when we got out there, we never knew whether we uh, put on a dummy charge or a real charge or debt cord or loan, uh, clothesline. So after we did this for so many months, I asked the one person in charge, I says, you know, you tell us how to get rid of these weapons, but you don't tell us where we got a group after we set these things. Mm -hmm. So that bothered me for a while. Yeah, indeed. So, so, but then I got out of uh, Kunsan, got discharged at McCord, went back to school. My wife had already registered me for the following Monday. So then I went and finished my engineering degree at Manhattan College. Great. And after that, I had gone to work as a civil servant. I used to say silly servant, but <laughs> um, at Pax River, and I was testing weapon delivery systems on aircraft. And it was something new that our supervisor had come up with. So I really in, instituted the initial testing. We were able to uh, test every practice bomb, rocket, and guns and correct, uh, figure out every error to a foot distance. Whoa. And these were tested over the Chesapeake Bay. We had cameras and theodolites up and down the coast. And I had to describe to the people analyzing the data how they did it. And I also ran the flights. One time I kicked the major off a uh, flight. I told him we had problems with our equipment. But what it was, we had a uh, lowest altitude that we could go in a dive. Mm. And he was, you know, trying to push it to get the information. And I just said, we have equipment problems. So I just canceled it cancel that flight. Oh. But uh, we did accomplish a lot. And while I was there, the uh, a lot of companies don't give you the data to analyze. So, but they gave us the machine code. <laughs> so I had only had a Fortran class in college. So I took the machine code, backed out the whole algorithm, made two major changes to the correction, to the algorithm and then was able to analyze it to within one foot of mist distance on our uh, analysis. So you were able to do that with just a background in Fortran that you learned in engineering? 
Well, it was engineering, really. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's really good. So the experience that you got in the Air Force with munitions really helped you once you got out. Oh, yeah. That was terrific. And later on, I was working on projects like uh, we installed air-to-air -air gunnery into the F-16. And with that, one of the jobs I was tasked with was reviewing the person who had all the, algor uh, the theory behind it. And I had to redo all his theory and see if there was any items that were missing or not interpreted correctly. So it was a very high level math. Yeah. And then while I was working in that, on the F-22, I physically installed the air-to-air -air gunnery algorithm in their um, simulator during, te uh, during development. So, um... so I did a lot of control work. I did the initial effort on the Cummins diesel electronics. Uh, I did a lot of other work in other systems. I also helped the Air Force establish their software management procedures between 78 and 82. And uh, with that, uh, you know, I was writing a paper for my thesis, for my master's, and, and the, uh, the dean wouldn't accept it hmm. because I didn't have any references. Oh. It was on software quality management in 1979. Yes. So I've done a lot of things early in life. Indeed. You were way ahead of time on that. And then my wife has a lot of medical problems, so these companies are always great about getting rid of you if you have high medical bills. Mm. So I moved around a lot to different contract places and a lot of experiences in a lot of different systems. And then in, uh, let's see, when was it? 1999, we moved to Florida under this one company, and uh, they were doing mischarging on the government contract. They wanted to charge an extra 10 hours a week. Everyone in the, comp in the group was 50 people. Wow. And I refused to do it. And I submitted a complaint on it and they fired me. <laughs> so I had a business, my wife and I had started a business in printing and we picked that up and we've been doing that now since 1997. Wow, that's a real change. And then also I volunteer a lot. Uh, this hat and shirt I have on is for the Forgotten Heroes campaign, which I joined out here in Colorado. And what we do is we present the medals and ribbons for those veterans who never had them presented to them. We have a uh, one-star general who presents it and we have a program and we work off of the DD-214 and with that, in some cases, people don't realize what medals they're entitled to. So that's one of the groups I work with. And, and another one I work with, I, I've been in Lions for over 40 years. My wife's now district governor in this area. Hmm. And in addition to that, I help with taxes. And I'm on the board for DABC, which does ta free tax services for lower income people. And we also do uh, taxes that are in arrear outside of regular tax season. And one of the things we just picked up is we're representing with a tax lawyer for people who have issues with the IRS within these. So I'm a little busy person, plus I'm a caregiver for my wife and she's a caregiver for me. <laughs> <laughs> but we survive. And um, I really do appreciate being in the military, around the military, Oh, I have to tell you one story when I was in Korea. Um, I'm always brazen anyway. So with that, uh, they had me going way in once a week. So I couldn't use one of our trucks, so I went out waiting for the bus. And I see this one-star staff car coming by. So I go out there and I go like this. He picked me up, brought me to the main part of base. <laughs> Oh, it's nice of him to do that. And another thing I did in Korea, which they were upset with from the motor pool, we had all these vehicles we had to train the airmen on. I mean, everything that we could use. So with that, I was training them and signing them off on their license. So the motor pool got a hold all of it, and they were upset. I says, okay, I have 40 airmen on our team. 
They all have to be trained on about 10 different machines. Do you want to come out and test them all, or do you want me to continue to do it, sign them off? Go ahead and do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was always pushing the system. Yeah. And the thing is, with the military, you always have friends for life. However, I've lost contact with a lot of them. So. Well, that's great. And you've shared with us many uh, positive as attributes that the Air Force, the military, um, was a part of your life. It's been a part of your life even once you got out of the military and has really affected uh, your life in a manner of how you lived it and this sort of thing. Is there anything that you would like to share with maybe the young men and women, teenagers and that sort of stuff um, that you would recommend and have them learn from your experience? Well, first of all, when you go in, uh, you got to ignore the TI and realize it's only a short time that they're going to pick on you. The other thing is military people tend to be very group camaraderie mm -hmm. and they always stand up for one another. And with that, we got some stuff going on right now, which is ridiculous, but we have to get back that our military has to be the strongest and there are things you can learn as well as get the GI Bill when you get out. And in my case, I don't have good insurance anymore and I've gotten the VA and they have taken care of me in so many different ways. I mean, I had a detached retina that they saw here at the clinic on a Wednesday afternoon. The doctor called 8.30 in the morning, said I was cleared to go to the Eye Institute right next door and he said, don't eat anything because they might operate on you tomorrow. Oh, wow. Well, I had to wait one day, but that was, I mean, you couldn't ask for better cooperation. Wonderful. So the VA I have experience is very good. So, but if you're in the military, you just got to realize you got to do your best. Sometimes you got to stay away from the politics. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's a good life. Yeah, yeah. So the re awards that you are working t to be sure that others get what they're, they're due for the right. military service, were there any awards that you received while you were in the service? Um, well, obviously, National Defense. Um, I got my sharpshooter. <laughs> um, there was a couple in the squadrons I was in, but it was never wrote down. Mm. And then I got a medal for being over in Korea during the Vietnam crisis. So that's great. Your overseas uh, experience is valuable. I found that to be true as well. Uh, seeing how other people live and um, just the different cultures are, are amazing what they add to your own background and experience. I'd like to add one other thing. When I was over in Korea, you know, a lot of service guys will try to go out looking for women and stuff like that. They actually had a town, a town they called it, American town, but they had to change the name after a while. And so on my weekends in Korea, I would go with a couple of buddies of mine and we'd go out to an orphanage. And I don't know whether we're going out to see the kids or the American woman that was out there. <laughs> so, but you go out there and we used to bring candy and these are all little tots. Yeah. And all they wanted to do was for you to pick them up and give them a hug. Oh. And we did that on every weekend when we were free. Amazing. So everybody doesn't have to be grotesque. No. So yeah, there's a lot of good that you can do over there um, in that manner. That's not, military directed, but it's right. definitely uh, reaching out to the humanity and, and serving in that fashion. Oh, another thing. <laughs> yeah. When I was at Nellis, uh, I was brought up Catholic and uh, I decided that I was going to teach CCD, which is the uh, Christian document and all that stuff. Well, I had a fourth grade class and it was eight o'clock mass and then we met afterwards. Well, with that, I 
use the teaching skill of having the kids present the lessons. Oh, yeah. And I had them, you know, I guided them through it and stuff like that. So I had 10 students, and one week I had one kid miss. Another week I had two kids miss. And I mentioned that to the director. He says, you're kidding. Most of the other instructors only have 40% of the students show up every week. <laughs> However, I was still a good person in Vegas to go down and gamble and drink. <laughs> so sometimes I wouldn't get in until 6 o'clock in the morning, prepare my lesson for that Sunday morning. Ah. So I had some fun and some good. That's excellent. That's really wonderful. So in conclusion, um, is there anything that you would have left out? You've done a wonderful job of sharing your experiences with us, but I want to be sure that there isn't anything in a, that you'd like to share before we conclude. Yeah, we have 53 years of marriage coming up in uh, September. We met in May, got engaged in July, planned a spring wedding and had to move it up to September and wow. 53 years. And my wife has been very ill over the time. And most people, you know, would not survive. And we even worked together in the house mm -hmm. in our business. But the one thing I was taught was always respond. Yes, dear. <laughs> That's a good lesson. One that we all, all of us guys need to remember. Well, Bill, I really appreciate the time that you've taken to share with us. I think this is going to be a wonderful uh, video that uh, we can share with uh, those people out there in our community. And I, I just thank you so much for doing this. So congratulations. Thank you.